the Redeemed Christian Church of God, a global church. information visit us at www.redeemersnetwork.tv Church in heaven, we hallow your name. We celebrate your loving kindness and tender mercies, the Lord of each year, the ancient of this. We salute your majesty. We want to honor you indeed as our Father, the lover of our souls, the Lord of the church in RCCG. We thank you. As you are taking care of the old, you are taking care of the young. As you are taking care of the men, you are taking care of the women. And you are taking care of the youth, the teenagers, and the children. What a God of, of heaven you are. The great Father indeed, we are grateful. We thank you for all you have done for our women over the years. Thank you for everything that you have given to us all the virtues you have added to our lives, and you made us to stand out, we are so grateful. We thank you for another year, year 2024. We are saying, Jehovah, you the Lord of the years in the past, you will be our, our Lord again in this year. And we shall experience greater and mighty things from you and your mercy will be much more than before on our lives, in our ministries, in our homes, and even in the nations. Father, this is our desire. Even as we say out of your heart, and we bring this message to the women in RCCG 2024 in the ministry, we say, God, you yourself, you will make it to register in our hearts. Amen. And we shall be women of your right hand. Amen. We shall not perish. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. RCCG women, Happy New Year. Uh, as we move on into the new year, the Lord has laid it in my heart to share with you this simple message which the uh, topic will be the right, the women of the right hand. I was just studying the book of Matthew 25, and at the end of the day, I got to this side of the message, of the passage, and I thought, ah, this will be good for all of us, because my wish is that every one of us will end 
at the right hand of God at the end of the day. And since this is the year of a, 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 new, a new life, where God is repositioning us, this is high time for us to know where we belong to and where we are going to end. My text is in the book of Matthew 25, and I'm reading to you from verse 34 to 45. It's a long passage, but I will do it quickly so that you can understand where we are going to. Matthew 24, 5, verse 34 to 46, I read. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an unguard, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, where saw we thee an hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? Where saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came into thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Verse 41. Then shall ye say unto them at the, at the left hand, Depart from me. Ye caused into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an unguard, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as he did it not to one of the least of these, he did it to me, he did it not to me. Verse 46, and these shall go away unto everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Brethren, this passage is not new to us, but what I'm bringing out, like I said, is that uh, in the year of repositioning, I think everybody should be aware of where he's supposed to be repositioned to. We should be part and part, parcel of our lives to the end of the day, the right hand of God, which we end, according to verse 46, into life eternal. The right hand of God, which is the life eternal. That is the reason why this passage is coming up. And I pray that none of us will end into the left side of the Almighty God in Jesus' name. Now, let's see the significance of the right hand. In a place of honor, the right hand is a place of honor and status. Like Jesus Christ himself, we were told that he sits on the right hand of God. Hebrew 1, verse 3. Hebrew 1, 3. The Lord Jesus Christ himself was positioned permanently to the right hand of God. And I will quickly read that one. Who being the brightness of his glory 
an express, an express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And Luke and Hebrew chapter 12 verse 2 said the same thing. This is telling us that if the Lord Jesus Christ, after he has done all he did for us, spending his life, using his blood for cleansing us, finally God positioned him at his right hand, are we going to allow all that he has done for us to be in vain? Like father, like daughters. Brethren, the right hand of God. What is the, another significance? The right hand of God, it presents ultimate strength and power. Ultimate strength and power. First Peter chapter 3, verse 22. First Peter 3, 22 says, Who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Uh, brethren, no matter the position you may be in this world, uh, you are the vice president of a nation, you are the minister of communication, you are the governor of a state, any position you may be, the right hand of God is, has power more than that one. And it has strength. I pray we shall not miss it in the name of Jesus. And in Psalm 18, verse 35b, Psalm 18, verse 35b says, Thou hast also given him, me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand has holding me up, and thy gentleness, thy gentleness has made me great. Still talking about the significance of the right hand of God. Right hand is the one that is oh, can hold us and hold us up because of the gentleness of God who will make us great. Brethren, right hand of God is very, is very significant. The women in the ministry, the women of the right hand of God, this means generally that we are women in the place of honor, in the place of power and of status. Women of place of honor and of strength. The women who bears the attributes of God. The women who takes care of God's sheep and who are even sheep themselves. They are blessed women. Heaven is their heritance. And they are women of Matthew 25, 33 to 34. All these ones are the targets that we want to reach in our repositioning and that which God wants us to be. Brethren, what made them have this quality? We should ask ourselves because we all want to be women of the right hand of God. What made us to have this quality? It is not hidden. It is in Matthew 25, verse 35, that I read to you to, 30, to, to 35 to 40, 46. The Bible says that Jesus was hungry. We gave him food. I'm already saying because I believe we are, we are going to be. Jesus was thirsty, they gave him drink. A stranger, they took him in. Naked, they clothed him. Sick, they visited him. Imprisoned, they, they visited him. Brethren, now, the next thing is, how do we now qualify for the right hand of God? We have known the quality, we have known what it is to be, but how do we qualify? 
we need to be qualified. Because we are our master is, he has already told us that why even after he has finished building the mansion above, and he will come back to take us to where he is. So this must be executed every day of our lives, in our homes, in our neighbors, neighborhood, at work, and in the church of God and the nation. This quality, we must exhibit it. We need to be qualified. I will now share with you some examples of women which we believe they are the right hand, right hand of God. In Luke chapter 8, verse 1 to 3, Luke 8, 1 to 3, we have these certain women that was mentioned. Examples of those women. The certain women, number one, the Bible says that it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Eros, Seward, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. Brethren, quality example. The people call certain women. Those who have been delivered, women who have been delivered from their infirmities, not only one, they only mention three, and they said, and many others, which means there is still room for all of us too, to fill that gap of many others. And I pray we shall be among the many others. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. What were they doing? Which qualifies them to be at the right hand. They were ministering unto him of their substance. He was moving from one place to another, providing for the need of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were ministering to him from their presence, ministering to him for rising to help at any time. They were ministering to him from their money, their time, their gifts, everything God has put in them. They didn't hide it. These are the examples of women we should follow as women of the right hand in our CCG. The number two example is that they care for a minister of God. They care for ministers of God. These women of the right hand, they care from the, for the ministers of God. And the example is the Shunammite woman. The Shunammite woman in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 11. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 11. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shinem, where was a great woman. I believe you are already great and you will continue to be great. And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber. I pray. I pray thee on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, a table, a stool, a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn it thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber 
and laid there. Brethren, many a times we have talked about hospitality in this ministry, most especially the, ministry, the women in the ministry. It is not that we are being forceful or we are just introducing a new doctrine. It's already in the Bible. This Shunammite woman has laid a good example for us. A man of God, I believe no man of the devil will come to our houses in Jesus' name. Amen. We don't frown our faces when we see strangers. And that is what the, 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 the Lord Jesus Christ was telling them in that Matthew 25 where we read, that when I was a stranger, you bring it, it brought me in. Many of us, we are not comfortable with strangers. It is not a good quality for that who the woman of the right hand. When we see a stranger, we should already have it in our blood that we will entertain strangers. This woman did not give the stranger food alone. He even prepared a house. He made a bed. I believe we are learning. And he, put, he made a table. He put a chair, he put a candle in case the man of God we have to uh, have to study. Thank God we don't use candles. And if there are places we still use candles, we just need to provide something for the man of God to, to have light in the room. And I believe the next thing will be food for the man of God. Whatever your condition may be as Women of House CCG, women of the right hand of God, I pray for you today. Whatever you will use to make strangers comfortable in your homes, either they are abiding with you in your homes or they just come temporarily for a time, God will provide for you. Amen. It is in our custom. When the stranger comes in, you first give him water. That's what Father Abraham did to the angels who were passing by. The Bible tells us that Father Abraham ran after them and he constrained them to come in. Here, this woman also constrained the man of God to stay with them. Don't let us develop an attitude of frowning our face against strangers and thinking, ah, he has come again. What are we going to give to him? Now, this man was coming repeatedly. And this man now said, okay, instead of him coming in and uh, we begin to park from one room to another, let's have an additional room to our house. Let's build him a chamber permanently. What is that telling us? When God lives with you permanently, <laughs> you can never lack because he's the Lord of the universe. The Bible tells us in Psalm 24, verse 1, the Lord, 24, verse 1, says that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. When God comes to your house, I am telling you, you can never lack. So let this be your part of your principles and let it be part of your quality as women of the right hand of God. Always embrace strangers. Give them what they need. It doesn't cost much in our lands to entertain visitors. Very little, one orange you can cut into four or six, present it well in a side place. If it is where they have, whatever is the fruit of the, of the, of the season, give them water. And whatever you have, Prepare it well if the stranger is going to sleep overnight and present. You are entertaining Jesus. Don't forget that passage, verse, uh, Matthew 25, he said, you do it for me. Where you do it for the least, the least of these people, you do it for me. Prepare your hearts, women in RCCG, women of the right hand. From now on, more than ever before, Open your houses to the things of the Lord. House fellowship, prayer meetings, and all you can do 
Absolutely. When you die, you are not going to carry the house to you anywhere. You are not going to carry it to heaven. But it must have served its purpose while you are here on earth. That which you qualify you to be the woman of the right hand at the end of the day. I pray this message will go right deep into your veins and you will become that kind of Shunammite woman in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three of the attributes and what, what makes them qualify is that they are generous to even the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody that is a man of God that comes in, they are generous to them. Let's see Mommy Lydia. Lydia in Acts chapter 16, verse 14 to 15. Lydia, Acts 16, 14 to 15. And a certain woman, another certain woman. I hope you'll be one of those certain women. By the time we finish this uh, talk today, you will be registered as that of one of the certain women. And a certain woman named Lydia, I'm reading Acts 16, 14 to 15, a seller of purple of the city of Tyatra, which worshipped God, had us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. Verse 15, and when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Brethren, this woman has not been born again for 10 years. Ago. The moment the Paul and others ministered to her, the Bible tells us that she was baptized and her household and immediately, he told them, now you have judged me to be free from sin. I'm no longer a sinner. You have judged me to be faithful to the Lord. Please come into my house and stay there. He constrained them. How many of the ministers of God you see in your towns and villages? and they have just arrived to do some work, these people are not going to stay there forever. And you have a place to give to them for the period they are going to stay. You close your eyes against the offer. You said, ah, I'm not the only woman in town. Let them go and look for a place. Don't they, don't they know that they will need a, a, a place to sleep while they were coming? Why didn't they pay for their hotel? Why didn't they do juice? Why did they bring their food along with them? Somebody who has just been born again. He saw himself being free from sin. He says, You have judged me faithful. Now I am baptized. He was rejoicing. She was rejoicing. Come and stay with me. Many of us, we have so many things wasting around us. We don't share it with other people. What are you going to do with them at the end of the day? It will be wasted. I always tell my people, Antichrist will not find any of my things to, to use when he comes. What, where, who are you preparing it for? And who gave you any way? The Bible tells us he's the one who gave us the power to get rich. Women of the right hand of God, no matter your age or year in the Lord, even if you are going to be born again in this meeting today, make it part of your life to be found faithful even to the men of God and to those who carry the banner all around. Open your eyes and let them, and let them be there and house Christ and God will give you all you will need to use in the name of Jesus. Number four. These women, they care for the widows. They care for the widows. Unfortunately, nowadays, we have so many widows around. In Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 42, Acts 9, 42, 9, 
36 to 42. There was a widow named Dorcas Tabitha, devoted to good works and helping others, made clothes for people in her community. She was industrious, compassionate, selfless, and full of grace. This is telling us this kind of woman, Dorcas, to the extent that even when Dorcas died, ah, all the widows came around. Hey, Peter, raise Dorcas for us. So please, we must raise Dorcas for us. So he made this bonnet for me. He did this one for me. Everybody had testimony about what Dorcas did for them. What have you ever given to people? Are you so stingy? Widows are around. Their problems are so complex. Also, especially in this time that we are facing economic crisis. Some, they don't have houses to live again. Some children have been stopped from school. They can't afford to pay school fees. Some have no food. All kinds of problems. Which one do you want to do out of these things? Women of the right hand of God, RCCG women in particular. On the judgment day, you won't say you didn't hear this message. And this message will be haunting you around. I pray that from this message, you will reposition yourself to be the women of the right hand of God. Let's follow the examples of those who have gone before us. Dorcas was a widow like other widows, and yet she served other widows. If you are a widow, that does not give you any, any, uh, any audacity to say, I have to write to I'm a widow. Widows are in categories. Widows are in classes. A widow is living in a mansion who has two or three cars. The children are driving one, is driving, she's driving two. Can you compare her with a widow who has no place to live, whose children have been out of school, who have no food, who have no work to do? I pray RCCG women of the right hand. You will think of this and you will reposition yourself to help this widow in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray God himself we send help to you in Jesus' name. Number five of the example of these women is the midwife of old. The midwife of old. Um, Shifara and Poa. Shifara and Poa in Exodus chapter 1, verse 15 to 21. Exodus 1, 15 to 21. They feared God than the king of Egypt. They did not compromise. God built a house for them. Every woman is a midwife. A midwife who must stay at which the children around him survive. It was true that the king wanted to kill all the male, males that comes out of women in Egypt. The midwives were informed. And one way or the other, by the time the midwives are ready to do delivery, the women, the Hebrew women, must have delivered. And the king now came to accuse them. And they did not compromise. How many of us have compromised to the detriment, to, to, to the um, downgrade of many, many children around us? Our children have clothes to wear. They have shoes that they have worn that they don't use again. Well, how many times have you robbed them and taken them to the church to look for children who don't even have shoes? Or those whose shoes are already worn out? Shirts, trousers, dresses that your children have worn. They have many. Why don't you sort out their wardrobe? Pack these things and take them to where these children will use it 
And they too, they will be happy to be like other children. These women, they help children to survive. What are the surviving uh, materials or things you are doing for children under you? Most especially those of us who are in the children's ministries. These women are in the midwifery ministries, and all our midwifery people, midwives, you should be hearing now. In delivery, you need to call on the God of heaven. No child must die in the process of delivery in your hand. If they die, you will answer for it on the last day. But more than ever before, I pray for you that every woman that falls into labor before you shall deliver safely. Amen. These women, these midwives, they did not compromise with the king's um, uh, commandments. And look at what God did for them. God built houses for them. And when God built your house, <laughs> you are on top of the world. Everything that is the most essential will be there because he owns them. That which you are still struggling to, to, to save for, if you just come without saving for it, that was what God did for them. Then number six of those, children, of those women is Moses' mother. The women that love their children and sacrifice for them. That's the number six of that category of the women of the right hand. Love your children and sacrifice for them. Nowadays, women are no longer sacrificing for their children. They will tell them, I have done enough. Continue to live your life. <laughs> it's a great mistake. In Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 to 10. Exodus 2, 1 to 10. This woman, this woman kept her, her, her son, Moses, for three months at the risk of her life. How much sacrifice have you had for your children? How much more of other people's children? We know that you can as well spend the money you have given to others on yourself. But you have to think of Matthew 25, where we have just read, we need to sacrifice for other people, other people's children, apart from your own children. Sacrifice time, sacrifice your prayer time, sacrifice fasting for them, be with them, teach them, love them, and some of us will say, we don't have ministries. Uh -uh. In our CCD, you don't have ministries. What do you have then? Women are exposed to so many ministries. You can have a youth prayer meeting in your house. It starts from two or four of them. They will be able to tell you what is their problem. And you can't sell them. By the grace of God, I've been in the women and the children ministry more than 40 years now. I have done so many by the grace of God. When we started the teenagers, I first had about five or six of them. They would tell me the secret, they can't tell their parents. They would tell me, mommy, don't tell my mother. Because they saw you as the next to God in their lives. At the time, I had 400 teenagers in my council, teenagers' council, from the north, from the east, from the west, from the north. We normally hold our meetings a day to the convention in the nights. When everybody has arrived with their mothers, they will, we will hold our meeting. 400 teenagers in the council, in my council. What do I do? I familiarize myself to them and to the, with the scripture the way they should go. And we listen to those, some of them who don't have school fees. That was long ago. Now that we don't come together like that before, we now say, 
coordinators should be doing it, and they are doing it in their various states. Brethren, we have so many children, the ones on the streets, the ones whose mother left behind. Some of them are left behind in this auditorium, our own auditorium in RCCG in Nigeria. And God cares for them. Brethren, this is a challenge. We need to have a time and a, live a life of sacrifice. Some of us, we don't want to be uncomfortable at all. A, a woman, for that matter, sleepless nights, while others are having their semester, you are walking, you are thinking, your brain is working like a, a clock. Oh, I remember that girl, that boy I met among the children during the Christmas party, whose leg, whose leg was not straight, who, who was struggling to walk. Many of them like that. God has taken them to orthopedic hospitals. Their legs have been straightened now. They are back to the midst of their people, of others, and they are happy. How many children have you helped? How many sacrifices have you done? You see these children in your churches, you just look at them and you, you go. God wants you to do something. Women in the ministry. Women in the right hand of God. The Lord will help us. Amen. Number seven, Deborah. Deborah love, love justice, patriotic. Prophetess, for that matter, wife of Lapidus, and he judged Israel. Brethren, in Judges chapter 4, verse 4 to 6, Judges chapter 4, verse 4 to 6, Deborah was bold and brave, mm -hmm. and he led an army, even with other generals. He was strong, she was strong, supportive, respected, and impeccable. She was supported. Brethren, how many of us have all our all the degrees we have in life? What do we use it for in our nations today? All the degrees we have, coupled with the gift of God in our lives, prophetess, prayer warrior, Oh, the greatest Sunday school teacher. You are a moving concordance. You know the, the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Good. But what have you used it for? When you see people suffering and when you see people are going into the ditch, what do you do? Do you shout? Do you walk them out of it and give them safety? It's very important. We should look for the safety of our nation. The government cannot do it alone. All of us, as the women of the right hand of God, we must prevent everything that will bring problems to our nations. We must prevent our children from being drug addicted. We must prevent them from being young adults. We must prevent them from joining hooligans during the time of uh, uh, of voting in our nations, every evil thing that the children can be exposed to. We women of the right hand of God, like Deborah, we must stand in the place of justice and we must make sure we play our role with whatever education we have. You cannot hide. If you hide, God knows you. But this woman did not hide. The Bible tells us that she, she arose while everybody was afraid in the city. And they are, they are walking in the byways. There are gangs. There are those who are snatching back on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the motorcycles. This woman arose. Where are you? The book of Isaiah tells us that we should arise and shine. Our time has come because the Spirit of God is upon us. The Spirit of God is upon you. Have you used it? 
women of the right hand of God, what are you using your gifts for? This should, we should tear it up like Deborah did in her own time. He led an army. He judged Israel. And he was on the right, she was on the right hand of God. I pray this will be our portion also in Jesus' name. And finally, Esther. Esther, I always see her as a young girl. The Bible tells us that she loved her nation. A wife of an Assyrian king, Asverus. In Esther chapter 4, verse 16, Esther 4, 16, she said, if she perish, she perish. In order to save our race, ha, brethren, <laughs> things are happening in our nations today. What effort have we made to make sure that we save our race? And this, our race, is wasting because we are not even bringing in offspring, new people who we, who we are going to leave the legacy. What legacy are we leaving behind? If you don't save them in character, morally, even how to behave in the society, behave in the church, and how to spend money, and the kind of husband they should marry or the kind of wife we should marry. All these things are very important. It all turns to safety of our generation. What are we doing to save our generation? What legacy do we want to leave behind? Women in RCCG. The women showed us, these women have given you their examples. These women showed us the example of the woman of the right hand of God by fulfilling what Jesus said about the people of the right hand of God in Matthew 25, 35 to 40. They gave food while the people are hungry. They gave drink while they were, in, they were thirsty. They visited those who are in prison they took in strangers, they clothed the naked, and they visited the sick. What is their appellation? What is their appellation? Eternal life. They are women of eternal life. That was the last statement in that chapter. That these people that God finds to be on the right hand, the sheep, they are the women of eternal life. And if God has a right hand, which is eternal life, then who has his left hand? There must be a left hand. <laughs> the people of the left hand are in Matthew 25, verse 41. Matthew 25, 41. They shall, then shall he say unto, also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me. Ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. The people of the left hand of God, they are cursed. They are people of everlasting fire. They have everlasting punishment. They are prepared for the devil and his angel, angels, angels. Brethren, we have a choice today. A year of repositioning. What is your choice? As CCG women in the ministries, it is better for us to choose the right hand of God. I believe you will choose it the right hand of God. Then let us begin to do the work worthy of right hand. And let us emulate those women of the past who have walked the work of right hand women of God, which we have given example. The midwife, the certain women, 
the mother of, of Moses who sacrificed her life for her children, for her son, Deborah who cared for the nation, Dorcas who worked for the, for, 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 for the widows, Esther who even bet his life for her nation. If I perish, I perish. And to those of us who are still in the house, you don't have Jesus in your life. Ah, that's another thing. In the beginning, if you don't have Jesus in your life, you are already on the left hand of God. And in the left hand of God is everlasting punishment, fire, and causes. You have the opportunity today to make a choice, to switch from the left hand of God to the right hand of God. And it doesn't take God a minute to save your soul. Lydia was saved. At the moment she was saved, she was baptized immediately, and she repositioned herself to the right hand of God. She even told the men of God, come and stay with me. Today, your life can change from the left hand of God to the right hand of God. And if you want to give your life to Christ, please, wherever you are now, I believe after this message, you will bow your heads. You will confess unto God all the lies, the behavior of the left hand that over the years you have been behaving. And confess and ask for forgiveness from God and ask the blood of Jesus to cleanse you. He cleansed Deborah, he cleansed Lydia. He cleansed the certain women from even the spirit of all the infirmities, and they became treasurer for Christ. You can do that one today also. God can bring you and change your position from the left to the right hand. Pray to him now. Sincerely tell him you want to be a woman of your heart, his right hand, and he will show you mercy. And to the rest of us, <laughs> what do we need to hear again? It is better for us to make up our mind, most especially women in RCCG. <laughs> you have no cause to be a woman of the left hand at all. You have every material, every teaching, every example you can have to be a woman of the right hand. All you need to do is that today, wherever I have missed it, please, Lord, help me to correct my position. Let me move completely to the right hand. And every traces of the left hand of God that is still in my life, help me today to remove them. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this period. We are grateful to you for a new year. What a Father we have in you. You are also always mindful of us. From year to year, over the years, you have been nurturing us, helping us, using your right hand to pick us up and to lift us higher. In this year, 2024, of right hand of God, we are grateful again. We therefore pray, Father, for all of you who have begun to be reposition yourself from the left hand of God and you are being born again today, that God will establish you in faith Amen. and you will walk with him from now on to the end of your days. And we also pray, Lord, for all those who have been there over the years. They have not walked the work of the right hand of God completely. This year of repositioning, Father, we are asking for your help. We are asking for your help and your mercy that we hold our hands and you will remove us from the left hand completely to your right hand. And let us satisfy the, the quality of the women of the right hand in the name of Jesus. At the end of the day, Jehovah, let us be in everlasting life. 
and reign with you eternally. We thank you for today. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.